Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In the previous video I showed you this Compaq Desk Pro machine with the Voodoo Rush card. Now in that particular video I also showed you two other cards. This Rendition V2000 and 100, a Diamond Stealth 2 S220 video card, which is a very interesting card. I was going to do a separate video on it, but then I noticed some other YouTuber created some great videos around this card and we're gonna start with oh so retro who has a really cool video on the rendition verite including some history some some really unique footage some uh, technical details on the card how they did the whole 3d thing some gameplay so yeah definitely worth checking out you should see a card here and i'll also add a link into the description and a second channel i want to shout out is retro tech bytes who also has a great video on the rendition verite with lots of you know gameplay lots of information definitely check out his channel retro tech bytes again i'll add a card and i'll add a link into the description as well so yeah, the rendition Verite V2001, a very interesting card. And I also showed you this Riva 128 card from NVIDIA, the PCI card. And what I totally forgot was that this Viper V330 card that I purchased off of eBay had a flaw. In fact, it was not working. Now let me show you what happens when we put this card in a PC and we try to boot it. So let me turn on the monitor here. It shows the Acer splash screen. It will normally show that there is no signal detected because the PC isn't turned on yet. So let's turn on the PC. And instead of the usual beeping that you get when you have a faulty video card, you do see that a signal is being detected and you see the screen flashing a little bit. So the amber LED turns green and when we go into the menu, we can see that we have picked up a signal here. So it has detected the MS-DOS resolution. I think this is upscaled to 720 by 400, but it is picking up a signal. And as the PC continues booting, it eventually boots into Windows. Obviously you don't see anything, but you do see the Windows resolution popping up here on the monitor. Now, upon closer inspection, you can clearly see here that certain traces have been cut between the Riva 128 chip and this memory chip here on the left. So this is something that will need some fixing. So here you can clearly see that there is communication uh, between the Riva 128 and the memory chip using these traces here and they have been broken. Uh, so I noticed from the eBay listing that the Riva card was broken. So I did do the purchase knowing that it was indeed faulty, but I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to fix it. And that's what we're going to be trying to do in this video. Now I have to say I'm not really comfortable fixing this type of stuff. I do have a friend who is used to working with this kind of fine grained uh, uh, patchwork on PCB. So I asked him to take a look and he actually came up with this. So he was able to fix the broken traces just by using a piece of wire and bridging them like so. He'll probably be the first to admit that it's not his finest work, but it should do. Unfortunately, I tried the video card in a computer and I got exactly the same results. So the monitor was syncing up, but nothing on the screen. Now, while I had the video card in a computer, I also did a quick temperature test. I was just kind of seeing around the PCB if any of the components were getting too hot which would typically indicate some kind of short, which is always a risk when you are repairing, you know, these, these, these small traces here on a PCB. But, you know, as I was starting the computer, I didn't notice any components getting hot and the main Riva 128 uh, graphical chip, which normally should get fairly hot. So here you can see the temperature climbing somewhat, but, it eventually kind of stabilized around the 45, 46 degree mark. None of the components actually got too hot to touch. So everything uh, appeared to be normal. And I even left it running for quite a bit and it never reached beyond uh, 47, 48 degrees. So yeah, normally that should be good. 
So I started checking the traces. And the first thing I did was I checked the traces like this. So I went from the memory chip on the left to the actual area where the fix uh, took place. So I was able to, you know, using these fine jumper wires, I was able to tack on to the individual traces just to make sure that they were making connections. But you know, obviously this is not an ideal way of making sure that the fix actually worked because doing tests like this can give you a false positive. I mean, you could think that, okay, all of these traces are okay, but you know, still further down the line, you could have a broken connection and you know, testing it like this just isn't sufficient. I mean, you can check that there aren't any shorts, but that's basically it. So what we actually want to do is we want to test to see if the memory chip is able to reach this River 128 chip around this area here. So after the fix has been done. So this is what we're going to be trying to do here. So you can see lots of traces here going through this path where we did the fix and they need to end up here somewhere. But obviously there is no copper exposed here where we can do continuity checks. But there is a way to do that. And to do that, we're going to be using this fiberglass pen that we can use on the PCB just to expose the copper on the traces here. Now, obviously, this will damage the, you know, the, the, the top mask of the PCB and it will actually expose the bare copper of these traces. But that's something that we want to have now. So I'm just going to go over the PCB like this and slowly but surely you will see the copper traces appearing. So let me just fast forward this a little bit. And this will give us an excellent reference to see if the traces from the memory chip actually end up reaching the River 128 chip. Just gonna clean this off and then we can do some tests. Now, just to verify that I am checking things correctly, I always like to have a printout of something like this where I can really correlate the pins on the memory chip to the traces that I just exposed. And it's always handy to have a big printout of that uh, when you're working with these PCBs because it will give you a really good overview and it will give you a reference point that you can easily follow. So you can, uh, you can follow the traces on the piece of paper because if you look at it on the PCB, it's going to be very difficult and it's always good to have a solid point of reference here where you can clearly see what pin is connecting to what trace, otherwise you will get lost. Also a word on the test equipment. Obviously you're gonna be using your multimeter to do continuity checks, but you will find that the probe of your multimeter is way too thick in order to do proper measurements. So what I tend to do is just use some alligator clips to put them on my test probe here and then use a simple jumper wire to uh, connect to it. And this will actually allow us to do uh, individual measurements of, you know, for example, the pins here on the memory chip or the traces on the PCB. There is a substantial difference between using a probe and using a jumper wire to do these measurements. I mean, even with the jumper wire, it is difficult, but it will get the job done. So if I take, for example, pin, let's say pin number six, I should be able to trace it down to the second line here, which is the case. However, when I'm testing pin number four, I'm not getting any continuity. So there is definitely something wrong with this trace here. And again, you know, by testing it this way, just to make sure that it is making a connection here, you're actually excluding the possibility that further down the line, the trace is broken. Okay, so what I then tried was to nudge away this little piece of wire which was used to bridge the faulty trace and just, you know, try to get it aligned again properly onto the trace that we are trying to bridge and then hopefully try to get it to stick with some uh, flux and with some solder. And, you know, 
this is a very difficult part i mean the traces are very narrow they are very close to each other it's very difficult to you know create a short or mess something up but we're going to give it a go so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to be adding some flux here to the pcb to the area where i want this firm connection to be and then I'm just gonna try and see if I can make this stick. So the idea is that the pin now will attach itself to the, the copper of the broken trace here. I'm just going to do it again, just to make sure that I have a firm connection. So I'm gonna be adding some solder here and normally this should be good. And you know, it's so easy to mess this up because as soon as you touch the thing with a soldering iron, you risk just picking up this entire thing completely like I did right here. So yeah, we're back to square one now. But at least you can clearly see that the two traces here are broken and then we need to patch them again. So before I continue, I'm just gonna clean this area here with some isopropyl alcohol so that we get a good view on the two traces which are actually broken which were broken to begin with and that we're going to be trying to fix again. <laughs> and you know, as a last resort, I ended up with this using two patch wires to see if I could, you know, fix these two uh, broken traces. And I did a continuity check on all of the relevant pins here. I made sure that there were no shorts. I made sure that they are properly connected to the the traces here on the right, which, which goes kind of underneath the Rivo 128 chip. So I measured them one by one, and now I am 100% sure that all of the connections are made. And, you know, if this was the issue that the video card wasn't outputting anything, this should definitely fix it. I know it looks awful, but I mean, please uh, take, in, take into account that this is zoomed in. Um, yeah, pretty substantially, so uh, it doesn't look uh, all that bad from a distance. But yeah, it's definitely not not the most professional soldering job that you will that you will find. But you know, it's my best attempt uh, to fix these these traces, which again, you know, go beyond my skill level. I think. So yeah, I double checked, I triple checked, I also checked uh, adjacent pins to make absolutely sure that there weren't any shorts, I didn't find any, and within the area there where the traces were broken, I am now 100% confident that these traces have been restored. But unfortunately, when turning on the PC, I got the exact same result. Now, when doing these kind of repairs, it's always good to have a second uh, identical video card so that you could compare. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I do have the AGP version of the Rivo 128 card. It has the same memory chips. It has the same or a similar main chip, but that's where the comparison ends. I mean, now on my Rivo 128 card, I did notice one electrolytic capacitor here, which you know, wasn't as flat as I was hoping it would be on the top. You could see that it's kind of it's kind of dented to some degree. It is probably leaking a little bit also as far as I can tell, but especially the shape of the, the top uh, yeah, made me worry a little bit. So just to be on the safe side, I decided to replace this 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitor as well. I did do some measurements with my ESR meter and you know there are different capacitors here on this video card but this one in particular did give a warning on my ESR meter with an extremely high ESR value of 9 ohms so just for comparison if I took the AGP version of the Rivo 128 card which has a similar electrolytic capacitor you could see that it measures just fine at zero ohms ESR. So I thought, why not replace it? And I'm probably gonna get a lot of comments on this, but what I typically do is use this to kind of uh, twist the electrolytic capacitor by pushing it down so that it kind of snaps off the two pins, uh, leaving the traces or the pads on the PCB intact. 
and then I can just remove it. Normally the plastic housing can just be removed like this. And as you can see, you can see the two pads here and we're gonna be putting a new electrolytic capacitor on here. But first thing we need to do is remove the two legs which are still on the solder pads here. So what you can typically do in order to do that is just use your soldering iron and see if you can kind of pick up the, the legs from the pad. For example, here you can see that I've picked it up my soldering iron. It's a bit difficult to see. The camera will probably not focus. Just try and get it off here. So yeah, so here you can see that the leg is on my soldering iron. Unfortunately, the camera is not focusing. And what we're gonna be doing now is just get rid of the excess solder, which is on the pads. I'm gonna be using this uh, desoldering braid to do that which will kind of suck up all of the solder uh, which is on the pad um, you can see that there is still some left so we're going to do it again you can clean this up with isopropyl alcohol as well but then what you do is just just put a fresh layer of solder on it you take your electrolytic capacitor take into account the polarity you just tack on one leg and then do the same with the other one. But unfortunately, despite all of these repair efforts and attempts, I still wasn't able to get the car to display anything on the monitor. Again, as soon as I turn on the PC, I do see it syncing up to the monitor. So we get the green LED on the monitor but nothing is being displayed so we get a black screen and that's it so yeah i'm a bit at a loss at the moment with regards to how i can proceed with this river 128 i'm still hoping for some kind of magical solution to to pop into my head but for now i mean i'm kind of stuck with it if anybody has any ideas please give me a comment in the comment section below or or hook me up I will definitely try and repair it somehow and if not I'm just going to buy another one and perhaps do a video on it. So as always thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. Consider liking the video, providing a comment and I hope to see you guys very soon in a future video. Bye bye.